So we are talking to the executive director of the National Black Justice Coalition, David Johns. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on NBCLX, David. Now, I actually want to start with a misconception that I already had. I thought that it was illegal to discriminate against someone who, uh, based on sexual orientation. So my understanding is that this act actually expands that protection and then some with the addition of gender identity as well. That's right, Tabitha. I appreciate you making space for the conversation and for us to clarify some misconceptions. It is not the case that everyone is covered based on existing civil rights protections, uh, whether it is the Civil Rights Acts of 64 or the um, Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, last year, the Supreme Court and the Bostic decision uh, made it illegal for discrimination regarding employment, but it is still very much the case that one can be discriminated against based on actual or perceived sexual identity, gender orientation, or expression. One can also still be discriminated on the basis of sex. So this is an inclusion of uh, discrimination acknowledging that it happens against women um, regarding public accommodations, as well as with regard to housing and other public services. So important um, a top line regarding the Equality Act is that it provides clear and consistent federal protections against uh, discrimination, uh, hate crimes, or other forms of bias that too many members of our community experience every single day. And how can someone say that this act will infringe upon religious objections? What is that argument? Yeah, the argument is, is essentially that uh, one should be able to hide uh, ignorance and hatred under the cloak of religion. Uh, and we should be clear, I, as the grandson of a Baptist preacher from Austin, Texas, uh, Reverend Lemio, rest, rest his soul, um, uh, fundamentally believe that everyone should have the right to be able to worship as they so choose. And that right to worship uh, and be a member of a religious community should not infringe upon the civil rights of anyone else. Um, and so this is something that has been tried by opponents of civil rights, by those who support white supremacy in all of its forms, not just hoods and tiki torches, but the policies that deny people access to fundamental um, services. And so we should all be clear that it is an attempt to uh, continue to hide behind uh, religion. And what are some of the similarities of this fight to what happened in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and what are the differences now? Yeah, we should be clear that this moment in the movement for black lives is a continuation of the fights that we saw and now celebrate sometimes in these watershed moments under Black History Month, uh, federal recognition of all the things that black people do every single day of every single year. Um, but it is, a, it is a continuation. It is similarly a continuation of what we saw uh, Marsha P. Johnson, a black trans woman lead at the Stonewall Rebellion um, some 51 now years ago. Um, all of these efforts are ensuring that our country, a country that uh, so many enslaved African ancestors built, that so many incredibly diverse people from around the world continue to make great uh, as one where everyone can have access to the American dream. Uh, and while there have been piecemeal efforts for us to get closer to those founding promises, uh, this bill fills foundational gaps um, and ensures that so many other people can enjoy many of the privileges that some people take for granted. And what is actually the history of this act? Didn't it pass the House two years ago, but then it kind of hit a wall? This act has passed the House of Representatives, every Congress that it has been introduced in, uh, and it hits a wall in the U.S. Senate. Uh, we should also be clear that more than 70 percent of Americans the last time that there was a national poll support the passage of the Equality Act um, and the rights therein. Uh, and it is likely a higher number now when we think about the advancements that we've seen connected to the movement for black lives and other requests for social justice. Um, and so the hope is that uh, with the shift in tide in the Senate, that there will be members of the Republican caucus um, who will listen to their constituents, who will honor that there is beauty and the diversity that makes up our country and provides access to opportunity for everyone in ways that are clear and consistent. There is beauty in our diversity. And, and just real quick, what is the timeline for this passage? Uh, that is to be determined by the U.S. Senate. Uh, what we know is that the bill has been introduced in both chambers, and we, the National Black Justice Coalition, are inviting everyone to call their elected representatives and encourage them to ensure swift passage so that the bill can make it to President Biden de Biden's desk as soon as possible. David, thank you so much for taking the time to break this down here on NBCLX. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.